Have you ever gone to pull sheets out of the dryer, a load of whites, only to reach into the dryer and the first thing that you grab and pull out is a red towel? Now, if you've ever done that, you have that moment of dread realizing, uh-oh, and you look in and realize that all of your white linens now have this lovely rosé color. Hi, I'm Ed. This is Planning to Garden. So why are we talking about pulling clothes out of the dryer? Well, here's the thing. It's Thanksgiving in the United States. Normally, people all over the country would migrate from wherever they are to get together with family and friends. However, this year, because of the pandemic, the public health officials from CDC on down have been banging the drum for weeks asking people to stay home and connect remotely. Think about it this way. All it takes is one person at your Thanksgiving table to be the red towel in your load of whites. And the next thing you know, you've got a whole family cluster that is all a nice shade of rosé. So let's try to avoid that, right? However, you know, in the U.S., we have this strong independent streak. So millions of people have already gone through the nation's airports and many more have driven so that families can get together. And while I don't encourage that, I encourage you to stay home and connect remotely for your health and the health of those you care about. A lot of people are getting together for many different reasons. They're, they've just made the decision that they want to get together. So maybe that's freaking you out a little bit, but you're in a family bubble that wants to get together and you're trying to figure out what to do about it. Well, is there a way that your garden can help? I would propose to you, if you have to get together with family this Thanksgiving for whatever reason, that you consider at least doing a garden party Thanksgiving. Now, some of you are saying, wait a minute, Ed, it's winter and it's cold. This is not a possibility. Hear me out. I checked on the weather. As it turns out, over a broad swath of the United States, from let's say about New Mexico on up through Ohio, from USDA zones 6A and above, it's actually warm enough to kind of make this work. So you're in highs of the 40, 40s and 50s by the time you get to mid-afternoon where people would normally be getting together. So you can actually make that work. Now, how would you make that work? Well, in a previous video, we talked about some different types of energy and how those impact your experience of being outside in your garden space. So let's review. Those are radiant energy, such as sunlight coming from the sun, uh, we have convective energy, which is simply warm air moving around, and conductive energy, where we're touching something and it's warm. So each of these is a way of transferring energy from your environment to yourself. And in summertime, we worry about trying to reduce these energy inputs so that we can keep ourselves cool. In this case, we're trying to keep ourselves and our families warm. So how would we do that? Well, first off, let's talk about convective because that's probably the most problematic. You know, when we think about keeping a space warm, keeping everybody warm, our natural instinct is to button up the windows or or if you're outside, let's say put up a, a tent and, and close the sides and then warm up the space inside of there. Well, all you've done in that case is just created an enclosed room without a lot of air circulation. So you might as well be inside in that case. It's not helping you. So let's just say that that strategy is off the table. Well, if you're not keeping people warm using convective heat, then what are you left with? You're left with radiant energy and you're left with conductive energy. So let's talk about those. Radiant energy, think about going to a restaurant. You, have, you see those, those heaters on the, on the poles that people often have. They turn those on. And what that's doing actually is it's, it has the little hat on it. It's throwing out heat and it's bouncing the, that radiant energy in the infrared spectrum down onto where you're sitting. And so that is actually, it's not so much that it's warming the air, but it's actually reflecting infrared radiant energy down onto you so that it can help heat you up. Now, some of you are saying, well, we don't have one of those fancy uh, infrared heater thingamajiggies at, already, and we're not going to run out to Costco to try to buy one. And I get that. You may, though, be able to build a campfire. Think about going camping. 
it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, it may be really cold, but if you bundle up with a jacket and you stand around a campfire, what is that campfire doing? Well, it's simply releasing sunlight. It's throwing off radiant energy. So it's not as if you're using a campfire to heat all the air in the campground to keep you warm. No, you get up close to it and you hold out your hands because what you're doing is you're getting that radiant energy to, to keep you warm. It's the light from the fire that's actually keeping you warm. So you could probably figure out a safe way to make a campfire at your house for this event enough to be able to gather around. One of the sort of ancillary benefits of that would be that you tend not to cluster real, really close together around a campfire. You kind of spread out around it. So it's it's a natural distancing mechanism because you're you're working your way around the outside of the fire. So that's a way to get radiant energy to help keep you warm. Now, if you do happen to have one of those propane heaters, great. Go ahead and use that, and of course use it safely. That is a, a very effective strategy, and you can seat people where it will be most effective for the, the people that most need to be kept warm. Now, another strategy that you can have is conductive transfer. And if you've ever taken something like one of those water bottles that you fill up and close really tightly and put down at the, the base of the bed to kind of warm up your feet, you know, you probably have it stashed in a drawer where you keep your medical supplies. So that would be one option if you really need to tuck it into to somebody's jacket or something to keep them warm. Another strategy to consider is to go back to our dryer problem. Well, your dryer is a wonderful mechanism for heating things up. So grab a bunch of towels, throw them in the dryer, heat them up really nicely, bring them out just before everybody sits down, put them on the chairs so people are sitting down on these nice warm towels. That'll give them a good starting run to, to being warm, getting a little bit of extra heat, and then have a second load of towels that are running in the dryer, and if people start to get cold, just run and grab a, a hot towel and swap it out or add it to their chair so that they can get a little bit of extra warmth, and that conductive transfer of heat will help people continue to stay warm. Ultimately, your, your best bet if you have to get people together is to maintain really good airflow. The air might be a little bit colder than you would normally have when you're sitting around uh, having a meal together. But I would treat this as a cooler season garden party or a camping dinner where you're just working around the, the cooler temperatures, still getting together and, and having your meal, but having plenty of good airflow and maintaining appropriate distance. Use your garden as a tool to help keep each other safe. Ultimately, if you feel that you have to get everybody together and have this, this meal, hopefully these strategies can help you get through your Thanksgiving gathering with the only rosé at your Thanksgiving table being Grandma's White Zen. Good luck, stay safe out there, and I'll see you next time.